Good evening, everybody. I'd like to welcome you to Hartman Baldwin's latest installment in our webinar series on home building and remodeling, where tonight we're going to focus on the subject of cost estimating. And, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll myth bust the bid process is what we're calling it. But really what we want to talk about is if we're considering a home building, home remodeling project, how do we get our hands around the cost estimating and how can we get some good information. Okay, that's what we're gonna be focusing on tonight. We're gonna to spend a little time talking about why it's important, how to get at that information. And then we're gonna transition into sort of a case study. And tonight we have a couple of people uh, from our design build team on a project that we actually completed not too long ago. And we're gonna be focusing on that project and how the, the importance of cost estimating helped for a successful project in that situation. Uh, before we get too far along, hopefully all of you have had a nice evening. You've found a nice, comfortable place to sit, grab your favorite evening beverage, spend the next 45 minutes with us or so. And um, I also hope most of you are like the rest of us are getting pretty familiar with Zoom. Uh, so I wanna encourage you as we go through the webinar tonight, if you should have a question or a comment or something like that, Go ahead and drop that in the Q&A section. We've got a couple people uh, uh, behind the scenes, Danielle and Carla and Christina, that will be available to answer questions. Or if your question is of a general nature, we may save it to the end, where at the end we'll have a chance to have a little Q&A, ask some and answer some specific questions, and make sure you're getting the information you hope to get out of <clears throat> our webinar tonight. So, a little bit about who you're going to see tonight on, in our panel discussion. Uh, my name is Bill Judson. I'm a design build consultant with Hartman Baldwin. I'm also a licensed architect. Um, also joining us tonight is Jesse Emmert. He's also one of our design build consultants. Hi, Jesse. Hello. Hi. Uh, and Lynn Dean, who you're going to see her project tonight. She was a client of ours and is now our most recent design build consultant. And then we're also going to be joined with our estimator tonight, Pete Sombrano, who due to a little technical difficulties is joining us by the phone. So hopefully he'll be joining us soon here in a moment. So here, all right, well, let's, let's jump in here. A little bit, I wanna just give you a little bit of background of Hartman Baldwin. We started 35 years ago. Devin Hartman and Bill Baldwin started the company. And from the beginning, they started with this idea of a design build firm, meaning they saw that you know, the, the pitfalls, the problems that can happen when you separate the design from the build side, okay? So right from the beginning, they formed a company that said, we don't wanna do that. We wanna go, we'll talk about old school, back into the Gothic periods where your designers and builders work together. In fact, you know, an architect really was more of a master builder than anything else. And that's really, really crucial when we start to focus on cost estimating and getting an understanding of how we're going to figure out what you want to spend and how much your project is going to cost. Okay. Now, why is that important? I'm sure many of you have heard a lot of horror stories. Some of them, some of them and I kid you not, I've heard this story several times. You know, people come up to me and say, you know what, Bill? My, all of my friends told me, whatever your contractor tells you, however much they say it's going to cost, double it. Okay. Wow. <laughs> That's a little scary, right? I think in a lot of ways, this is the most important piece of information. You're going to hear a little bit later, we have kind of three buckets of information that we need to be paying attention to. Estimation is one of them. But I think for a lot of us, it is the most important, not just to understand what we're going to what we're going to spend, but how are we going to keep control of that? How are we going to keep this thing from doubling in cost when we're in the middle of construction? Okay. So my advice to you is, and what we do is, we want to estimate early and often, right? As soon as we can, we want to start getting some ideas of costs of what we're designing, and then revisit that throughout the process as we make changes or additions or things start to, we start to make selections. Because really what happens is, you know, you're, you're, you don't want to separate the design from the build. And unfortunately, I think a lot of the horror stories that we hear today, my, my costs went up double, 
you know, you hear lots of stories. I spent a bunch of time on design only to find out the project was much more than I wanted to spend. So all of those things point to one thing in my mind, and that's the perils of separating your design from your cost estimating, okay? Because they inform each other. What we're designing is gonna have a cost and that cost is gonna inform what we're designing. So we need to make sure that we're looking at the full picture and that's how we're gonna keep you in control of, what, of getting what you want and spending what's right for you, okay? Now, I've been with Hartman Baldwin for 15 years. I've talked to a lot of people very early in the stages of, of residential remodeling. And I can see the importance and, and the desire and the need to get our hands around how much things cost, maybe even before we start talking to architects and, and contractors. So what I find is people start to look for all sorts of areas to get an understanding of how much their project's gonna cost. One I hear a lot of are our friends and neighbors. Hey. You know, my friend just did a project similar to what I'm going to do. Let's go talk to them and, and see what they spent. I, I, you know, I encourage that. That's, there's no problem with that. But you can't take what someone else has, has spent and just immediately apply it to yours. You know, is it the same kind of house? Is it the same age of house? Is their plan exactly the same plan that you want to get? You know, there are all of these things that will come into play because what you want is probably different from virtually everybody else out there. And so what you're going to spend is going to be different from everybody else as well. So you can, I mean, these are, this is a good place to start to kind of start getting our head into it. The other thing that I find is people can be a little embarrassed about what they spent on their project. So sometimes when I'm talking to people, oh, you know, how much did you end up spending on that project? And they'll give me a number and I'll kind of, you know, I know, wow, that sounds a little low. And so I'll start to ask questions. Well, what did that include? Oh, and, I, and then I'll hear stories like, well, you know, we bought the appliances. So, I, you know, that wasn't included. And in fact, we, you know, we found the flooring and we bought the flooring. So that wasn't included. Well, what's included and what's not included. You know, an appliance package is a big swing on a kitchen project, you know? And so are they including all of the true costs of the project and are you getting good information? Another one of my favorites is the internet and HDTV. Now, the internet, this is very general information, okay? When we're looking on the internet, trying again, this is probably where most of you start. Googling cost per square foot, cost of kitchen remodels, all of that kind of thing. But I'm here to tell you, you know, again, is it the exact solution for you? And that's how we're going to get good costs? Probably not. It's just very general terms. And, and not only is it general terms, but it's also very general geographically. Okay. I have friends in, in Dallas, Texas, and, and, and in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. And when I hear what they spend, building their homes, real dollars, real information, it's significantly different than the cost that we see here in, in coastal communities in California, it's significantly different, okay? So the internet, how does that take it, that into account? Of course, a lot of people were watching HDTV all the time, right? Seeing all of these, I can't name all the, I get so frustrated with those shows, I don't, I can't watch them. And the thing that's frustrating to me is not only, again, all the other things I'm talking about, it's general. It's not the solution that you're looking for. It's, it's generally geographic. You know, we're not able to grab specific cost information for the area that we're in. And then if you remember one thing about what, getting your pricing from TV is remember what is TV selling? They're selling comedy, drama, and tragedy. They're not selling you home remodeling or home building, okay? So I've talked to people that have been on some of these reality shows and they really pump up the drama. You know, you, you see these things where, oh my gosh, you know, hey, we just discovered this wall that we were gonna take out is a bearing wall. You mean you couldn't see that before? But that's drama. That's what makes you stay on the line and watch the commercial to come back and find out what happens, okay? So it's really, even though it's called reality TV, it's not reality. 
far from it. Okay, so keep that in mind. Another thing we may do is we may try to find people that are in the trade, contractors, architects, get an understanding. Maybe these are the people that have their, their hands around the cost of projects. I know, Lynn, you spent some time uh, before we started working with you talking to contractors and architects, and you have an interesting um, story to tell for us. Sure, sure. This, uh, yeah, there's some trepidation, actually. You know, you're going in, and, and in our case, this was our, our first home that we'd ever bought. In fact, it's still our home. And uh, so we went and we brought an architect to this, to the place. We walked around. He assured us uh, with a number that he thought he could go ahead and design our dream home around. We spent some time together. And then when it came to fitting it out, the cost was double. So that actually was some tragedy there, Bill, <laughs> for us. <laughs> and so, drama, uh, I'm sure. And drama. That was, yeah, there was some drama there. So that was, that was unfortunate for sure. We thought we were doing the right thing too. Just going to jump in really quick. I think one of the things that's difficult for people to understand when they talk about costs is, you know, I hear this a lot of times when I'm talking to people, they'll say, well, you've, you've done kitchens before, you've done projects like this before, so you must know what it costs. And I think that comes from the fact that we live in sort of a mass produced world, like almost everything that we consume as, as consumers or as Americans is mass produced in, in one way or another. But I think you really hit on it, Bill, when you said that your kitchen's probably not, or whatever it is, the, the remodel is not going to be probably exactly like anybody else's. It's, it's likely that it's going to be, it's have its own unique conditions, even if it's the same house that you're doing a remodel on a, in a tract or something. So. Yeah, that's right. Thank you. And then when you're talking to contractors and, and tradespeople too, you'll start to hear this parlance of the, you know, how much per square foot, you know, the, the problem with the price per square foot is, in, and it's some of those things I already mentioned, what is it including? You know, I was talking to someone the other day, they had just bought a new refrigerator for $15,000. Well, what's the price per square foot on a refrigerator? Okay. So, and it may be too general. It may not be the solution that you have. And probably most importantly, especially when you talk about remodeling, it's a little bit different with building a home where we need to be more in tune with what the site situation is. But on a home remodel where we're tying into the rest of your home, what does that mean? And I love the picture that's up on the screen up here, because in this time, especially here in Southern California, where we're all trying to find more space, lots of cities will let you have a basement and not count that towards your floor area ratio. OK, so there may be some advantages to you there. So I get this question. Oh, it'd be easy. You know, look, I have this space underneath my house. We can just dig a basement. I could have a game room down there, you know. So the picture that you're seeing here is a project where we actually dug a basement. But what we had to do in this case is literally disassemble the part of the house where we were gonna dig the basement. And that's what you're looking at here. And then we dug that basement. So then we dig that basement, put in all of the structure that's needed, fin you know, get it ready to finish out. And then we come back and we rebuilt this house, okay? so. If you ask me how much the price per square foot of that basement is, do you want me to tell you how much it was to dig the basement and finish it? Or do you also need to know, hey, how do we tie that floor back in? How do we tie the ceiling back in, the roof? You know, everything that's involved in digging you that basement is not just the basement itself, okay? So what I'm trying to get at here is you know, we really need to find the right solution for you. And when I say the right solution, I don't mean the right design. I don't mean the right cost. I don't mean the, the right scope of work. I mean all of those things. All of those things work together, okay? So we need to make sure that we have an understanding of what you want to do, what the conditions of your house is, in case, you know, so that if there's any changes that we need to make through all of that, and then start to show you what some of these cost implications are, okay? So that's what we really want to get to is getting the right solution to you holistically. Okay, I want to just take a, a, a couple of minutes here and, and talk about the whole process. I'm not going to spend too much time here, 
but I do want to, because then we're going to dive deeper into cost estimation and how we apply it through all of these pieces of the process. It's really pretty simple. You know, we break it up into three parts. Okay. We have our design where we're going to have a conceptual design and design development, and then we're going to get into construction. So what do we do in the first part in conceptual design? What we want to do here, okay, is explore some design solutions or some design options for you, okay? We'll also want to write a scope of work so we make sure we understand everything that you want to do because in a lot of projects, you know, we're, we're maybe working on a part of the house, but you may want to replace the flooring throughout the whole rest of the house, or we may need to do some repairs to some plumbing somewhere, or maybe you want a new HVAC system. So we want to make sure we're trapping all that off. And then very quickly, we want to get some cost estimates in play, okay? Because almost all of the time, what I find, and I'm trying to think if I've ever had an exception to this, what we want to do and what we want to spend are always two different things, always, okay? Whether it's a simple laundry room addition or it's a 6,000 square foot house, we reach that point where what we want to do and what we want to spend are two different things. Now, when do we want to find that out sooner rather than later, right? Like to Lynn's uh, anecdote, Lynn's story, she spent a lot of time and emotion and money going through and designing with this architect only to find out, well, this is way more than we wanted to spend, okay? And then it's like, then what do we do? We shut down, we curl up, you know, under our blanket and, and try and recover and get the courage to try again. Or in a lot of cases, we just give up, okay? So it's very important when I remember when I said at the beginning, estimate early and often, this is the estimate early part where even just some initial designs, let's get some cost to that. And here's what's unique to us is a lot of times if you have just some conceptual designs and you take that to a construction cost estimator or to a general contractor, they're going to say, I don't know, you know, I need more information. You know, do you have your permits? And you're just going to get a lot of roadblocks. Okay. It takes a lot of knowledge, a lot of experience to be able to look at a conceptual drawing and start to put some realistic cost to that. Okay. And that's where having a construction cost estimator involved early on in the process is key. So next, next once we have what we want to do and what we are going to spend in balance, now we're ready to figure out all the details and move into the design development phase. Okay, so now we start to figure out those details. We, if we need to get engineers involved, we'll get engineers involved. Our interior designer starts to help you make selections and specifications so that at the end of that piece, now we've got a good set of working drawings that we can go and get permitted to, that we can build to, that you have an understanding of exactly what the project's gonna look like because we picked out the tile and the faucets and we're showing how all that's coming together. For example, the, the, the slide that's up on the screen right now is Lynn's house and you can see we had very detailed drawings for the addition off the back of the house. And then below you can see the finished piece. And, and, and here's the kicker. Here's probably one of the biggest nuggets of this whole presentation is that if you have enough information, you can get to a guaranteed cost, okay? So now we've got this great set of drawings. We're getting ready to start construction. We've got a guaranteed price. Now, <laughs> when half of your house is torn down or we're starting to build your new house, those chances of this thing doubling or going up 50%, 30% are gone, right? We've designed it. We've drawn it, we've picked everything out and you have that, that guaranteed cost, all right? So we don't, we wanna relieve your stress and anxiety at the time when it could potentially be at its highest point. Okay, what, uh, what we wanna transition to here next is we're gonna talk specifically about Lynn and Michael, Michael's project. Lynn, as I mentioned, is the, was the client and our new DBC. And Jesse worked with her on this project uh, quite extensively. And um, Pete was uh, helped us a lot with the estimation as well. So 
the pictures that you're seeing up there are the end result. So let's talk a little bit about how we get there. So Lynn, maybe you could, uh, if we could go to the next slide, you could talk to us a little bit about what some of your project goals and what you were hoping to accomplish with your remodel. Sure, sure. So after, uh, yeah, that experience, we, uh, that was unfortunate. We, we met with Jesse, we'd heard about the design build model. And so we met with Jesse and we put down our set of extravagant plans for mm -hmm. um, a house we could no longer afford. And um, Jesse just helped us work through an array of options um, for us to, our main two goals really at that point were to get a new kitchen remodel and then as well to push out and create a new family room space. I mean, we had of course, uh, a dream list of, of things, um, including, you know, trying to get access to an upstairs room that um, we, we really couldn't access very well and um, refurbishing a fireplace. But I mean, these were our two main goals. Great. Yeah. So, so go ahead, Jesse. Well, I was just going to jump in really quick. So about the way our process worked with uh, what the deans were looking at, they had some some, some great ideas. And in fact, the original plans that they had worked with the architect, they were beautiful plans, um, but obviously they, they came in when they had costs on it. It was way more than they, they wanted to spend or, or could spend. And so one of the things I think that was really critical to the success of our project is that we spent some time talking to them and, and, and got to know better what their needs were. And then we could start prioritizing those needs and as Bill had mentioned, get some costs associated with those needs really early in the process. So then they can understand, oh yeah, we can do all this. We can add some of these things and we can really make sure that we're, we're meeting uh, the needs uh, of, of ourselves at the present time and in the future, according to what makes sense for us to afford. Um, yeah, that's, and that, that, yeah, that's great. I mean, you know, you really touched on something here is that a part of the a big part of the conceptual design process, part of the process is to get you enough information that you need to decide how to move forward, okay? And so one of the things we'll oftentimes do in conceptual design is look at a, an array of options, right? Because, you know, we can look at say, something that's more sort of cost conscious version and then look at a version that's maybe something a little bit more and then look at a version that's like, okay, here's how cool it could be. Because if you can see those things and then also have the costs associated with all of those, now you're in a position to say, okay, I may not be able to get everything I want, but I like this. This is going in a good direction and I, and I can understand that cost, you know? Or you may look at it and go, I can get everything I want, but you would be the first, you know. Bill, can you hear me? Can you guys hear me now? Hi, yes, we can. Okay, great. Sorry about the audio problems I had, but I'd like to chime in here at this time. My name is Pete. Uh, I think I was introduced earlier on. I, I was the estimator on this project, and I'm one of Hartman Baldwin's estimators. Uh, on this project, um, as, as the team was mentioning, uh, specific to Lynn, um, I recall, you know, doing a number of options for, for Lynn and Michael on this project. And uh, what's interesting is, um, although those options, you know, we put pricing to a lot of those options, um, when it came to actually building, um, they had a tool and that was knowing what some of these prices may be. And some of that they exercised later on in the, in the project. And the thing I would really point out uh, about conceptual design estimates is that um, the role of our of estimators is to look at a project and put a, a, a cost that's realistic to the project. Uh, and with that said, we do a number of things where uh, when you're looking at a kitchen remodel, you're excited about the cost of the cabinets and the cost of the tile backsplash and things like that. And we look at the entire project and you might see as your first line item, irrigation relocation. And, and you're asking yourselves, where does that come from? And, and a lot of that is we look at every photograph, we hear information from our DBC and from the architect about your project. And uh, what we'll do is um, well, we'll look at the exterior photos. And if we if you have a bump out like, like Lynn did, uh, we, we added a family room, you know, there's maybe irrigation there that we need to relocate and we provide that cost. So, um, that's the role of, of, of an estimator. And, and we wanna look at all aspects of the job so that you have a good firm idea of what the project 
cost. Good, yeah, thank you, Pete. That's, you're right, that's a big role that Pete will serve in the beginning, all of our estimators is kind of the, hey, did you think of this? You know, we're moving outside. Did anybody look outside? What kind of impact do we have in there? Like you pointed out the irrigation. So those are the things that we may not be thinking of. And if you hearken back to that idea of cost per square foot and all of that, did, you know, an irrigation move is gonna maybe impact your project, but may not have impact any, any of those projects. If we go to the next slide, we're gonna hear it, see more about what Pete was alluding to because you know, what I find too is people have kind of, here's the minimum that I wanna do. You know, I need to have a new kitchen and maybe a second floor addition over the kitchen for my new master suite. But then they're also, so we have, here's the, the kind of the main project and then we have like, boy, it, it would be nice. And maybe we're considering this and we're also considering that. And I know Lynn, you had some of those in your project, right? Sure, for sure we did. And again, because we're working with Hartman Baldwin now where you're the designers and the builders, we can have those realistic prices out there um, and know that it's gonna be within our budget, right? And so we were able to decide, you know, with Jesse's help, there is an upstairs room up there and how can we get to it? And we were able to add this beautiful staircase uh, in our hallway um, versus having to take off the whole roof where Pete could attest to what it takes to actually support a whole new second floor on this 1912 home. So now that we have this beautiful staircase, we can use that room. And it got us, you know, that got us one of our priorities. Yeah, it's interesting when you when you look at the before picture, you can see the, um, the risers are kind of painted like a, a caution tape orange. And there's a reason for that. That was a treacherous staircase. And I'm a pretty physical guy, but I only went up and down it a couple of times. And, and it, was, uh, it was a little nerve wracking. And hence, they didn't use the space upstairs. It, even though there was a lot of space up there, it wasn't really usable. And so uh, I think one of the beauties of our process is we can, we can come up with these great design solutions. And then we can show how those design solutions are grounded in, in real cost. And you know, here's this beautiful staircase that's incredible enhancement to the home and the hallway, um, and also you know uh, serves that that function. So it, it gets them all at a fraction of the cost of a whole new second story about there. You know, we have all sorts of things we can do, and so we may want to explore some of those options with you. You know, do we have a tub and a shower in your master bath, or would you rather have a great shower? and not a master, not a bathtub. So we need to kind of show you, you know, what those differences can be and, and show you those options. You may also want to have it broken out like, okay, hey, we're going to do this master bedroom addition, but I don't know if I'm ready for the kitchen. So can you separate those two things out? Uh, you know, separate out the kitchen from the front entry from the master suite addition so that you can kind of get your hands around what each of those individual things can cost. Because it's not to say that those don't happen all now, but you may consider, I may not be able to do it all at, at this time, but I wanna take all of my available resources and focus on this part. And I know in the future, when maybe my situation changes, cash flow changes, then I can go back and, and dive into those other parts, those other phases. So oftentimes in a conceptual design process, we'll do a master plan for people. And again, put them in a position where they're able to decide what to move forward on and do it with the assurance and confidence that what they're moving forward on now isn't gonna detrimentally affect the other project that may happen in the future. So this is the high level discussion that we can have at a, in the conceptual design phase when we've got our designer, our estimator and the client all involved in it and all putting their resources and their efforts together towards the common goal and that's that successful project. And I know Lynn, you worked real closely with our interior design team on your project. How did that go for you? Oh, it went, it went really well. I mean, I of course had my dreams and my showed up, uh, Jesse, I like to always joke with Jesse, I had this big, thick manila file folder I'd collected of things for 18 years and to every single meeting, but, and as much, you know, as I knew that I wanted um, and I could actually give some direction, there's no way I could have pulled all the looks together um, without the help of Miranda 
Um, and Michael and I absolutely have our uh, different styles and she could listen to us and come back the next week and present um, solutions that looking at it now, I can't believe that there would have been anything different. So um, that was a surprise. I, I didn't really realize the value that an interior designer would, would make when signing up with the firm. Yeah, uh, at this point, you know, this is, um, estimation doesn't stop at this point. Um, you know, there's uh, things, what I call checkpoints during design development. So you have a big budget, let's say, uh, for your project. And at this point in time, you know, you might want to know what your powder costs. cost, you know, so your, your lot of things are coming along. You're seeing uh, great designs by the architect. You're looking at selections with, with our des interior designer. And you want to know, boy, what would the powder room cost to remodel that? This is a great point in time to, 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 to ask Harmon Baldwin, you know, can we put a price to that? And so there's an estimate during the development for that powder room remodel. And the importance of that is that you don't want your budget to grow out of hand. In other words, let's say you have a project uh, at $300,000 and you keep adding things, but you don't know at the end what it's going to cost. And all of a sudden you're, you're, you're $400,000 or $450,000 into your project and you, you're surprised. So during design development, it's a great time to check. If you add things, what will, this, what will it cost? Likewise, you might think, okay, that room is really important to us. And the appliances that we have in our kitchen, we only bought them five years ago. What would it cost if we saved those uh, appliances? In, in, in other words, we use those appliances. I'll give you the deduct for that so you know what that is. So it's a great point in time during design development, price check some of these added things that you might be uh, wanting to, to rebuild or, or redesign in your home. Yeah, thank you, Pete. Uh, you know, the, the, you're right. It's a, it's a great, you know, again, going back to that, let's estimate early and often, right? Here we have a great resource to make sure we're helping you stay in control of your project because you may be like Lynn and Lynn, I'm going to want, want you to hear a little bit about this great tile that you ended up with your, in your project where you may have all of these allowances like your faucet and your sink and your appliances, tile, and you may fall in love with something that may put you over your budget. Well, here we've got all of these other things lined out that you can make the decision. Okay, do I want to splurge a little bit and spend a little bit more? Or do I want to keep my budget where it is, but I want that piece and I need to find savings for in other areas to compensate for that. My point being, you have that information while you're out looking at all these beautiful things. So you can have fun. You can be romantic and, and about this and, and really kind of look at what you want because you know we can come back to this document and you're gonna understand immediately the impact of your decisions. Right, Lynn, is that, what, is that your experience? It is, it, it is. And yes, I walked into the tile store and I saw the Matawi tile and I, I fell in love. <laughs> and, uh -huh. you know, just also as well, just with their story, American made story. Um, and yeah, we also figured out that it actually in the end wasn't that much of square footage that was going to be taken up with that. But something else to though consider, it's almost that you can liken in a way this document is if you were planning your wedding, you know, you can say, you know, looking at the catering menu, do you want the steak? Do you want the chicken? Um, because some of these other options that we considered as well, which we didn't touch on really was, if you can see in the background there, we have these steel windows and there's also some steel doors. Um, we wanted those as well. How can we make that happen? What can we give up? And so we were able to um, subtract. Uh, there's some box beams that we have in our living room. And we had originally thought, let's cont continue them on in the, the family room here for some consistency. Well, in the end, we, we really just, we wanted the steel windows. If we wanna come back to those beams here at some future date, we can do that. Yeah. So we good. took those off. Yeah, but you, you couldn't have made those decisions if you didn't have information to make them by, right? And I think that's what's so great about how what Pete was mentioning about how that you're still in control and you have these allowances and you know what things are going to cost. And so, um, and, and what Bill had mentioned as well. So that's right. So now we've gone through and we've picked everything out. We've got our tile picked out and our sink and our faucet and our flooring, all that good stuff. 
and we're ready to get started with construction. Okay. Now, Pete really starts to get involved. We start into our, our pre-construction process. And one of the first things we're gonna do is sit down with our estimator, in this case, Pete. And so we'll have our architect, the interior designer and the construction project manager all sitting together in one room, looking at the plans, getting ready to start construction on this. And then we start to look to Pete to really, okay, let's really tighten up this estimate. Let's forget about the 15%. Let's mm -hmm. get to our exact cost. Pete, how do we go through that? Well, what we do is we, we say um, job walk. So at this point in time, uh, we have detailed plan. We see uh, everything from the structural uh, work that's necessary, uh, tile patterns uh, on these plans. So at this point, um, we're, at, we're at the, the very detailed level of um, a building, we have an action plan. So we have a job walk and at point in time, our, our subcontractors come out and we look at the job uh, in detail. Um, and this is, this is the really exciting part. This is the, the, the on the ground. And we'll look at every part of, uh, of your house as we're building things out. You know, obviously the affected parts of your house. Um, we'll do things, get into the crawl space, look into the attic if you need to. So we'll do these things to make sure that we're looking at the house property properly uh, as we build. Um, in the slide that you're seeing here, this is a, a great, uh, this is this is one of our projects. Um, I'm there with the plans looking uh, at a couple of electricians. And this is a great example because if you look at that power line run to the house, that goes to their main service panel. And on this project, we were thinking about relocating it uh, just on the other side of it. A part of this project is we were getting out this, this driveway, we pour a new driveway. So our electricians thought, well, why don't we put the main panel on the garage with just the top of the screen and run conduit to the house so you wouldn't have this line running through you know, your, the middle of your yard and uh, your service panels on your, on your garage. And these are the things that are really great about this because they, they add the value to, to our build. Um, I look at things from a high level early on with our, our subcontractors, we certainly can see a better build, a better way of doing things. Um, sometimes they might cost a little more, uh, but they make a lot more sense. Sometimes you save money because it's a smarter way of doing things. So uh, this is really the exciting part of, of the build. And uh, this is where we dial in and we have that exact price for the project. That's right, Pete. I, I, I love the job box. I mean, having, having that many more minds that are focused on one piece of your project and able to find maybe less expensive or better ways to do things that maybe we haven't thought of yet, you know, and, and it's really great. The other thing I love about it is, you know, now we've got our, the electrician there at the same time as the framer and the heating and cooling contractor. So let's suppose we're moving your air conditioner. Well, how are we gonna get electrical in there? How is that duct gonna get up through the structure? Well, we've got the three people that need to figure that out standing with us in your home, figuring it out before we start construction. Most of the time we're gonna figure out, people are gonna try and figure that out during construction, but we wanna figure it out before construction. I don't know, Lynn, if you remember your job walk on your project and how you're, what your impressions of it were at that time. I have to say, I loved it. That was one of my favorite days. Because it was, it's not just the one, you're not just having one plumber come in and you, you guys have two plumbers at least, you know, two electricians and um, just the energy around it was really exciting. It's a sneak peek for us, the client, to see what type of people Hartman Baldwin works with. You, you, you pretty much don't know. And uh, we were just impressed with the professional, uh, professional ability or professionalism of, of all of them and yeah, it was just, it was a fantastic experience. It is. It's a really energetic meeting, really exciting. Yeah. And then once we've got through that, now, you know, we've spent some time with some people that are going to actually be there on site building your project. Pete's had a chance to really kind of collect all this information from them. And we're going to take one more step because we also need to start talking to you about how this is going to the logistics. How is this going to work? during construction. If we're gonna be taking out your kitchen or taking out a bathroom or opening up half of your house, you wanna know, well, how am I gonna live through this, right? How am I gonna cook and clean? How am I gonna use a restroom? 
How are you going to secure my house? What time do people show up? I've got a cat. In fact, I've got two cats and two dogs. How are we going to manage that? Because these are the things we want to take into account before we start construction. If there's any accommodations we need to make to make sure you're comfortable if you decide to stay in the house, make sure you're comfortable through all of this and that you can have a, um, you know, a, a good experience while we're in construction. So we're trying to think of all of those things. I don't know, you know, Jesse, uh, Lynn, did you guys have anything that came up in the pre-construction meeting? Oh yeah, I mean, they have a dog and a cat and that's when we found out that they had a bird cage for the cat. So that was gonna keep the cat safe. <laughs> That's Jesse <laughs> likes to say. It was like a big, I think it was designed for a cat but it looked like a big parrot cage and- uh, I think they call those cat condos now, right? Oh, is that right? Okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, there was there were some other things that came up at that meeting that um, became, it was helpful information. Um, that, that we were able to make sure that we were abiding by. I think that's the important thing is to be respectful of the family and uh, making sure that we're, we're living by their rules. As yeah, we what's great about that. Yeah, what's great about that meeting too. And that was um, a nice surprise as well. It, you sit down and it's very formal and uh, our, proje our project manager led it. And at that point you are filling out this document who's gonna be the point of contact, let's get the cell phones, let's find out how many kids, the dog, the cat, um, gardeners, who's coming onto the property, how can we, um, you know, if something were to arise, you know, who would we contact for case of emergency, things like that. So that just made us breathe a little easier. Yeah, and the other thing we're gonna look at, you know, as Pete mentioned during design development, you may want to start entertaining maybe changes or revisions or everything. We still want to keep that open. Okay. And in fact, during the design development phase, you may have decided to make some changes based on that information. Okay. So what we want to be able to do is make sure that we're tracking from you from those initial designs, conceptual designs, where were those cost estimates? And then what are the changes that happened during design development to get us to this point, okay? So we wanna make sure that we can trace back all the way back to that point because if we start designing and some, all of a sudden this cost gets to be higher than where you wanna be, we can always reel it back to where we were in the conceptual design phase. And that's where, you know, Pete again is just such a great resource to help us track all of that and he's very patient and very uh, thorough in making sure that, again, that we're considering everything that's involved in each of those. Probably one of the biggest challenges of your job, I would think, Pete, separating out all that stuff. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, sometimes it's, it's they're, they're little minor things, but uh, maybe it's a little added tile backsplash somewhere, but not, but it's, it's our responsibility to show you where price ha has increased because of some change, whether it be a change that, that you've made, a change that's required um, by us, uh, maybe through a relation or whatnot, but all those fine details, we certainly, um, uh, we owe it to you to, to show you where cost has increased. And yeah. um, you'll, you'll get the uh, information that. And once again, it's yeah. things that you've added or things that you've added, once again, if you the cost on that, you can decide to, to, to pull back. Yeah. So now we've gone through this estimation process, and now here's the kicker, if we can see the next slide, is now, remember I kept talking at the beginning about the exact solution, and now we have the exact cost of your project. In fact, in our case, we're going to guarantee this. We know what we have now. We've, we've figured out the big picture. We've figured out all the details. We've climbed around your house trying to uncover anything potential that that's going to have an effect of your project so now before we start construction you're going to know exactly what the cost of your project is okay now this is great because not only you know do we know but we're not going you're not going to have to worry about coming home at the end of a long day of work to another change order because someone missed something or there's an error in the drawings that's just not gonna happen because we've taken the time to plan the work and now we're working to working the plan, right? Plan the work and work the plan. But estimation's role is not gonna stop. Now we're ready to start into construction. We get into construction. 
And oftentimes people will start to feel so good and so confident about the way things are coming together that you may want to consider some changes during construction. And I know Lynn, you had a few of those in your project. We did, we did. We, um, well, first uh, the unglamorous one, which was we were, had been putting off putting a roof, you know, with this roof had been patched and double patched, triple patched uh, over time. And so originally we, you know, without again, knowing kind of Hartman Baldwin and who they were and the type of work they were going to do, we were just going to just only roof the work that they had done. And um, as well with this fireplace, that was always had been on our list of things that we would love to redo. It had just this white brick um, facade. It was, it just wasn't um, in good shape either. So as time went on and we started seeing the, the craftsmanship that, um, the, the contractors were putting into the, the work, the way that the project was being run, we started having confidence, you know, based on prior experience, this was so nice. And so, uh, sure, we pulled, we, you know, pulled Pete aside, can you get some pricing on the roof, please? And then as well, I just, we just knew the cherry on top would be to finish that fireplace. You know, we couldn't imagine having the team pull away and we'd walk into the living room and just not have a, a pretty fireplace. And that was just, the cherry on the top for us really. So I'm so happy that we did it. Well, there's another one too. It's not super glamorous either, but you can kind of see it in this picture. If you look back there in that hallway, there's a, a, a trim at the top, sort of a, a crown and then a trim below that. That I think that was Michael's idea. And what that really did was because of that high ceiling in that hallway, it kind of brought all that together with the design elements that were already in the rest of the house. and and really finished off that space beautifully. So that's where it's like, it's collaborative, but it's also about having all those pieces and all the information and you need to be able to make that decision. Say, so yeah, let's do the fireplace. Yeah, let's do the roof. And the way we handle these is we don't, if you say, oh, do tile the fireplace, we don't run off the, and tile the fireplace and say that afterwards, oh, by the way, here's how much that costs. But we'll just take a step back and you can see up there, we'll, we'll start a request for pricing, where again, we'll get Pete involved and say, hey, Pete, here's what we're considering, a fireplace or crown molding or stair. We'll do a, maybe a little sketch if needed and then hand it over to him because he knows this project inside and out and get some of that cost input from him. Yeah, this is a, a great a great part of, I think, the project for me. Um, I get a lot of satisfaction out of this portion of it. And that simply is because we have a project and it's it, it's developing and our clients are, are seeing how things come along. And if, if it's a kitchen kitchen remodel, they're, they're seeing cabinets come into place and really neat things coming along. And, and you know, the RFP tells me the client is building trust in us that we are delivering what we said we would deliver. We have that level of professionalism, the quality is there. And so the client will begin to ask us, what is, you know, what does something like this cost? And what's great about uh, the design build uh, process is that uh, we, we, we can provide a, a price pretty quickly, an RFP uh, pretty quickly uh, to our clients. Typically, there's a request for information during this stage, and the client may want to know what something would cost. And our project manager would relay information to the architect. Architect relays the information back to the client, and it kind of goes back and forth be before they figure out what it is they want to do, and then it would come to an estimator to put together. Uh, with a design build, what's really nice about the way we do things is our architect and our project manager are in weekly meetings with the client. So if the client asks for a price on, in this case, a fireplace, our, our architect will draft it up, shoot it over to me. And the idea is to try to get a price back to our client within a week so the client can make a decision uh, whether they, they want to move forward with it. And of course, that also keeps the uh, construction progress moving uh, right along. So once again, it's, I, I like the RFP process. I like to see that first RFP come across because it tells me that we're building trust in the client and we're delivering what we say we, we're going to deliver. Uh, another That's thing right. I might bring up really quick while we're talking about the fireplace without digging too deep in this, um, there are occasionally things that come up that aren't necessarily a change that's motivated by the client and it's not something that's necessarily motivated by us. It's just in that discovery phase, we, we, something comes to our attention and there was something pretty uh, dramatic on this project. Um, the backside of this fireplace, which you can't see, which is in the dining room, 
at one point in the history of this house, which was built in 1912, they had, um, you know, like a pot belly stove or something that, that vented into that chimney. So there had been a hole in that chimney for the vent of the pot belly stove. And um, at some point that had been drywalled over and somebody had just shoved some building paper in there. And quite frankly, when we pulled the drywall up and saw how close they had come to, um, you know, burning the whole house down in, in the years that they'd lived in there and their raging holiday fires, um, you know, was, it was terrifying. So, you know, we brought that to their attention. We sought out solutions to, to rectify that, that issue. And we, we provided those to, uh, to Lynn and Michael so that they could make a decision based on what was the right thing for them. But of course it needed to be the, the safe thing for the, for the house as well. That's right, thanks, Jesse. And so all of this, what does what is, what is this all culminate to is this beautiful project. And if we look at the next slide, I'm gonna kind of uh, laugh a little bit because if, you, if you've seen Lynn on the webinar, she's sitting literally probably where this picture is taken, <laughs> kind of fun. And if you'd like to learn more about this project in particular in terms of design and selection and everything, go to our YouTube channel We've got, a, as I mentioned, we've got a whole series of webinars on there. And we did a project spotlight on Lynn and Michael's project uh, not too long ago. And so if you're interested, you can click into our YouTube channel and take a look at that webinar. So what, what are we talking about here? And from our point of view, what we're talking about here is having a happy client, a successful project and a quality build, okay? What you're seeing up here, these are numbers <clears throat> from, from Guild Quality, a third party uh, that, that surveys our customers on their satisfaction. And we're consistently seeing numbers bumping up close to 100%. There's always gotta be one person, right? But very, very high. And I'm here to say a big, big reason for that satisfaction is that we're dedicated to professional cost estimating, cost estimating early and often, okay? Because what that does is it puts you in control. It puts you in control of your project. If you have the right information at the right time to decide how to move forward, you're gonna be in a place to drive the project where you want it and end up with a beautiful project a high quality project and a good experience, right? That's the other thing when I mentioned you know, the horror stories that we hear, not only do the prices go up to you know 200%, but we had a nightmare getting there. So we're committed and a big piece of this information is not just architecture, not just construction, but professional estimation early and often to put you in that place so that you can have that success that good experience, and most importantly, get what you want, okay? What you need, that's what we're after. All right, we went a little bit over time here. Um, I wanna make sure that uh, we've addressed some, some questions or, or any other concerns that anybody has. Um, I don't know if we got any questions or maybe they've all been answered. Yeah, hi, Christina here. Um, we did get a few questions. Um, and the first one was, how has COVID impacted your timelines? And more specifically, are there longer wait times for permitting? Yeah, that's a good question. It, it, it certainly has. I mean, we've all been working from home. Our office closed, uh, you know, the day that, that the uh, mandate came down. So, but we were able to kind of get back up to speed pretty quick, but it, it, it just takes a little bit more time. The cities and, and jurisdictions definitely are taking more time to get approvals. So yeah, it's definitely affected us. And then the other thing that we're seeing is uh, from materials. Um, I know Pete, you've been, you've been telling us that you've been seeing some escalation of pricing materials during COVID as it related to the COVID pandemic. Is that right? That's right. Um, unfortunately, you know, because shutdowns, um, for example, lumber, lumber mills slow down production and, and restrictions on, on uh, um, how many people you can have in a certain place, for example, um, milling out lumber and, and that sort of thing. Uh, obviously, the supply dwindled and uh, the demand is there. So uh, certainly prices in, in, in lumber, for example, have gone up. 
Um, so we've seen that uh, still as well. Um, so there has been some impact from COVID. Um, timeline on your project. Uh, well, that's all been impacted in, in some levels. The smaller the project is, in other words, the, 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 the area that we're working in uh, certainly stretches out the timeline because we, we can only have so many people working within a certain area. Um, the larger the project is, and, and we, you know, we have a few whole house remodels going on, so we can have plumbers working on one side of the area and the electricians working on, on the other. So that seems to be moving along a little bit better, but the smaller projects, uh, we have to stagger people in. So there is some impact uh, occurring because of COVID. It's a great, great question. Yeah, thank you, Pete. Yeah, thank you. Um, and then we did have a final question here. Um, how do you keep subcontractor bids competitive? Mm, another good question. I get that question a lot, you know, on the design build, how do I get price checks? You know, you heard Lynn mention earlier, you know, we had, we, you know, typically when we're getting bids, we want to make sure that we're getting bids from qualified subcontractors that are going to be up to our level and meet our schedule needs. And so we will bring multiple subcontractors over that we think meet those, con those, those needs and, um, you know, make sure that they're, they're competitive with each other. And, and Pete, you may have more information along these lines too. Uh, that's right. Um, so certainly uh, having multiple subcontractors bid uh, the same item, right? The same, same level of work. Um, when I look at bids, I make sure that, that they're competitive. And sometimes, you know, one may be higher than the other. And it's not necessarily that it's wrong. It's be this subcontractor saw something a little different that the other contractor didn't. And so it's always my responsibility to call and try to uh, bring in these, these, these bids to make sure we're bidding things right and we're seeing all the same things so bids are competitive. And the other thing about bidding and subcontractors is something that we're really proud of is uh, we have subcontractors that have worked with us for, for 25, 30, 35 years, and it's a level. So we won't necessarily bring, and I shouldn't say necessarily, we, we won't bring in a, a subcontractor that we've worked with um, in your home um, and, and uh, you know, provide it just because it's a low bid. You know, we want to we vet all of our contractors out and make sure uh, they're all reliable. Um, because for us, it's not just a construction job. We realize this is your home and uh, uh, the, the people we work with, um, we worked with them for a long while and uh, we trust them and uh, we, we, we always have to check uh, their bids to make sure they're, they're tight and they're looking at the project uh, the right way, so. That's right, and then we'll share that information with you. If you remember the estimate I showed you, we had line items, right, for all of those various trades and subs and material suppliers. And then, so you'll see that, you'll have transparency into how those bids are coming in how, what is the electrical? What is the plumbing? What is the carpentry? So we'll be able to see all of that and review that with you as well. So that will be all part, all present. You'll be a part of that uh, as we get ready to get into construction. Yeah, that was a great question. And then let's see here. We, our final question for the night is, is there a minimum size project that Hartman Baldwin will accept? Yeah, that's a good question. I get that one a lot. And, and, and really, I don't, you know, I don't look at it as a minimum as much as, you know, where it starts to make sense for us to work together, right? Because um, we're a, a, a firm of a certain size and we've built ourselves around a certain size project that's going to take a lot of coordination, that's going to have, as Pete mentioned, it's, it's better for us to have a little bit more area that we're working in in your home. And so we'll look at those things, you know, if it's a simple thing, that's just one or two subs, you don't need us, you know, but if it's an addition that maybe involves a, a, a bathroom and a bedroom and a closet, and we're going to need concrete and framers and, and roofers and tile guys and cabinetry, and how is all of that coming together? That's where we live. And that's how we earn our money. So I look at it, not so much from a size point of view, as much as a complexity point of view and a size point of view. So for example, it's hard for us on just a bathroom where we're, where we're very small and we're gonna have to be coordinating a bunch of subs and where maybe you know, a, a, a gifted, a, a skilled craftsman or one or two would be able to do that for you. 
we really live in the areas where there's complexity of the project that, that um, you may need help with. Yeah, and it looks like that was the last question. Uh, awesome, was good questions. Okay, I know we're over time. I just have a couple other things to mention. Um, you can see it up there on the screen. Um, I encourage you to go to our YouTube channel and, and take a look at some of our other webinars. Uh, on April 8th, we're gonna be talking about uh, the design build process and ensuring remodeling success. And then coming up on April 22nd, you won't wanna miss this. Uh, we're gonna be doing a project showcase on the house you see on the right, a green and green home that we had the uh, pleasure and, and experience of, of completely renovating and doing some remodeling there. So keep your eyes out on that. Make sure we have your email address uh, so that we can keep in touch and, and make sure you're, you understand or see all those upcoming events. And then if you're ready for you know, a more specific conversation about your project, about your home, and if it'd be helpful to have me or Lynn or Jesse or Carla, one of us come out and talk to you about uh, what you wanna do and who we are and see if we're a good fit for, e for each other, certainly give us a call or email, stay in touch. And you can see we've got all of those social media channels open for you. Check us out on Facebook, Instagram. I mentioned the YouTube channel. We have a great house page if you'd like to see some of our work. There's a lot of photographs on there, Twitter. So we're open on all of those. Check in with us. Make sure you're staying in touch because we're going to give you some more good information and try to have fun with all that. So maybe I'll just give everybody a chance to say uh, good night. Pete, thanks for joining us. Thank you so much. Thanks for everybody for joining us. And Lynn, thank you for joining us, for sharing your home uh, with us and, and your stories about your project. Thank you. Enjoyed it. Thank you. And Jesse as well. Once again, Jesse and I have done a few of these and great to have you on board again, Jesse. Thanks, Bill. And thanks for, for everybody who joined us tonight. I hope that you, you got a lot out of it. I do too. Thank you all for coming. I hope it was helpful. We'll let you go now and get on with the rest of your evening. And I hope to see you again. Bye.